What's going on, everybody? We are back for another episode of Finding Your Niche with Niche. You know, I decided, you know, I had on another outfit, but I put this outfit on. I put this shirt on that says creative director because the person on my show today, I want to be like this person when I grow up so bad. Oh, come on. Uh, man. <laughs> Caleb, Caleb Seals, welcome to the show. I appreciate it. Man. Um, he is on the show today to talk about how he found his niche as a film director, really, and so much more in the media space and production in general. So, yeah, thank you so much for coming on today. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. I've kind of like right. been stalking you a little bit yeah, for the past yeah. like year and a half. I nah, would say. I've been seeing you too. I've been, been seeing, seeing you. The, yeah, you? No, I've been seeing you do your thing. Like, <laughs> Like growing and you know what I'm saying as a as a director producer like yeah. it's really been inspiring to see you kind of like grow and develop in that space mm -hmm. like like for real. I think um you are my first I think you're my first official like fellow production person yeah on the show. Oh really? Yes. So, so we like, can really talk about like we some can real really stuff. talk. Yeah. I'm like really I'm like really genuinely right. excited. Yeah. I yeah. mean I've been, been excited for everybody but like Right. We're in the same, you know, we're in the same yeah, vein. So the same industry. I'm like yeah. super excited to talk to you. So first of all, for people who are novice to what media is or yeah. to the industry as a whole, can you kind of describe your definition of what a film director is? Um, a film director is someone that solves a problem. Mm. I think that's the number one thing. Um, directing is having a creative or finding a creative and finding a creative solution, whether that be through um crew whether that be through uh you know supplying a need as far as like you know shooting it or executing it but it's finding a way from going to, from a to z okay that's really it really? you know what i'm saying because it's like if you look at you know tv film mm -hmm. movies and stuff like that like a, you see the same directors yes you do you see a lot of the same directors yeah but it's hundreds of thousands of directors out there but it's the reason that those specific directors get hired consistently mm -hmm. because they solve problems. They're able to take a script and take it from this ideation mm -hmm. and this budget that, you know, this, this studio is going to offer. And they're going to give it to this, this person consistently because of what they do so well. Yeah. So that's it. Can you kind of talk about, though, like solving a problem, I guess. So yeah. let's look at the two. The two spaces I feel yeah. like that a director kind of has to operate in, mm. which is a technical and creative space. Right. So can you kind of break down what are the problems that you have to solve within those two spaces? As far as like technicalities, um, like on the technical side, it's like, who do I hire? Like, who do I hire this producer? Do I hire that DP? Mm -hmm. um, am I going to work with this editor? You know what I mean? Or do I want to outsource the production company or outsource the production entirely to another production company that can execute it based on my idea, I, my ideas as a director? You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so that's the technical aspect of it. Um, that can get very, um, you know, challenging for people who don't really understand the business of, of production. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's the technical side as far as the creative end of it. Mm -hmm. um, like, I feel like the creative side can be challenging, but it's only challenging if it's not a connection to that story that's being told. Um, okay. So let's just say it's a script that is unrelated to you, right? And mm -hmm. you're giving that script. It's going to be tough for you to kind of like be married to that idea. Sure. Right? Um, so that's where I think like, the creative, um, it it plays a role, but it's not as significant as the technical issues that do come up yeah. in the creative process, in my humble opinion. Like. Yeah. <laughs> um, first of all, speaking of you being humble, let me just say, he's been able to literally, you've been privy to work with some of the dopest people yeah. in the industry. Yeah. Um, you, you're being humble, you're being modest, but like, can you talk about that? Like... <clears throat> Those two spaces that you said, like operating in the creative space and the technical space, but also paired with working with high profile clients. So can yeah. you talk a little bit about the people that you've been able to work with and what that experience was like directing for them? Well, um, I think the main thing um, and the reason why I've been consistently able to work with such like high profile clients. Um, and when we talk about like technicalities and um, the creative aspect as being a, a being a director, like the technical aspect or the technical side mm -hmm. is where I shine through the most because I always center myself around the the, the best people possible. Okay. Like when it comes to like hiring people for different pr productions, 
I'm real intentional about like the people that like I center like my brand around. Mm -hmm. Like everybody is an extension of you, mm -hmm. right? As a producer. I agree. So when people come to you and they hire you for said thing, everything that comes from that mm -hmm. thing, right? It's like your brand. So even though the client had a negative experience with this person, that is yeah. it's not you. Yeah. It's still a reflection of you, right? Right. And so that's why I built the reputation with all the right people, with, mm -hmm. with different labels, different productions and stuff like that. Um, I got this rapport to where like people know me for executing, doing a good job and not dealing or, or tolerating with, you know, foolishness. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so that's how I've been able to navigate so well. And, you know, like another thing, too, that I've been doing a really good job with is putting out fires. Like, yes, that's what I like to describe. Um, See, my definition of a film director would be a firefighter. Yeah, yeah. You literally put out fires. Essentially, you know what I'm saying. Day. I mean, that's the same thing as like a problem solver. But like, yeah. I, I, I think I think the most important thing with that is um, to, to to use the metaphor of being like a pilot or like a flight attendant. Mm. Like in those like traumatic situations mm -hmm. and like plane is like. Engines, all four engines right. are dead. Mayday. You about to, you about to crash. <laughs> yeah. Like the pilot still has a poker face. Right. The flight attendants, they still have a poker face. That's very true. If the customers or the people or the crew that's around and they seeing that your energy's off mm -hmm. and they feel in everything that you feel, the whole production can go left. Yeah. Leadership starts from the top down. Yeah. So at the top, if it's not, you know, poised or moving with comfort mm -hmm. people not going they're not going to respond well to that you have an example of a story of like um, okay disaster production <clears throat> i mean it's so many it's, it's it's so many i can't really get into like every single one but it's 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 been so many times to where you know um something didn't get ordered or oh, like man. i'm on a production i'm hiring a gne team or my dp or um like somebody forgot a lens or Somebody forgot like a certain light that I needed for a certain scene yeah. at a certain time, or even better, my my favorite. Um, I'm hiring models for a certain thing, okay. and hair and makeup is taking way longer than it should take. Always. Um, <laughs> and let's just say you booked the space for four hours, and hair and makeup is took three hours, and yes. you got an hour to yes. shoot. Yes. But you plan for the four hours. Talk four about hours. it, Caleb. And so it's like, at that point, <laughs> you got to realize like, are you willing to sacrifice a scene, or Obviously, you ain't got more money to to pay for more time. Correct. So you gotta you you gotta learn to not be married to what you originally thought it was gonna be. Yes. And sacrifice and make the best out of it. Yes. And keep a poker face the whole time. That's a film director. Right. So let's kind of go back a little bit to kind of um, if we were to think about where it all started for you. Were you always wanting to come into the industry as a film director, or where did you start off? No. At? Uh, I, I would tell everybody. Um, like it never started with this. It never started with this ideation of um, being like this big director or working with this big crew or like I just really enjoy photography mm -hmm. and that grow that grew into me learning how to do video. OK. Um, and so I was just, you know, what I'm saying just a student on campus at Kennesaw State University, you know, like I hate to say it, but like almost 10 years ago. Um, but during that time, I was just like, you know, it was just a hobby, mm -hmm. just trying to find myself. I was shooting with like a Nikon. Yeah. Um, okay, Nikons. Yeah. Shout out to the Nikons, all four of you. Right, 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 right. So it, it just started with that. And, you know, like, I think one thing that we've grew away from as creatives is finding mentors. Yes. So one of the first things that I did, you know, starting out in photography is I found a mentor and I found a mentor and one of my homies, uh, Jarell Lamar, shout out my boy. Um, and so he wanted to learn photography. Okay. Right. And I wanted to learn video. Okay. But around this time, he was that guy on campus as like the video dude. He did all the re little recaps mm -hmm. for all the Greek organizations. Mm -hmm. um, he did recaps with different student orgs and stuff like that. So like, I'm like, cool. Like, let me, let me see if there's something there. Yeah. Right. Like how to edit. Like, you know, Jarrell pulled up on me, you know, years ago and like I'm in a dorm room and he's like, yo, bro, like this is how you open Adobe Premiere. Wow. Like this is how you drop files into wow. Adobe Premiere. Like he showed me that, you know what I'm saying? Real basic stuff. That way, yeah. And so 
we just built in a real, real way from that. Like, you know, he wanted to continue to learn uh, photography. I taught him Lightroom to a certain yeah. degree. And we just built. And so it went from that to me, um, me doing like small video shoots mm -hmm. for different friends and stuff like that. I was mm -hmm. shooting grad photos at the time. I'm pretty sure you're familiar course, with graduation photos. Yes. <laughs> um, so I was doing that at school for like a lot of my friends and um, eventually started doing like video recaps. Yeah. And so it got to a point to where like Jarrell was in a space to where he was getting like a lot of video clients, okay. right? And he was like, hey, bro, like I can't work on this. Like send it over to you, send it over to me. You know mm -hmm, what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I work on it. And then I eventually started getting other video clients, right? Okay. And so like I couldn't do them and I'll send them his way. And so what, I don't know what happened along the way, but like his clients would request me Whoa. and then my clients would, reverse, would, would request See, him. See, Almost, but what I'm trying to get to is that like we eventually just started working together. Okay. <laughs> since they okay. were requesting each other, it merged, and everything. that's how Open Season started. Wow. Yeah. So it started with that. That is so cool. Yeah, and so Open Season was never initially started to be like this big production company, right. this big agency. Um, I tell people a lot of time like it's really just a collective yeah. of creatives that really want to continue to build in the film industry like mm -hmm. we want like if you want to come in and you want to be a producer here's a producer who just did you know several projects with you know this person or that person or if you want to come in and be a dp mm -hmm. this is this is the track record like i, I was a dp mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying jarell was a dp it's, it's so many people that said open season that was a dp or if you want to be a grip like it's yeah do it's, you it's guys, i was gonna there. ask do you guys kind of accept people who are beginner <clears throat> levels or yeah uh we do we do um and again it's not like an acceptance process or like an onboarding process or we're not going to ask you to drug test. It, it's not like that. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it's not that type of, like, space. Okay. It's like, we're a family. Like, it's, mm -hmm. it's no other way to really put it. It's just like, you know, when it's time to come together and work on a project, we know what it is. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you still have that flexibility to kind of go out and let's just say you're working on a movie for three weeks. Cool. Okay. Like, I want you to do that. Like, we have the reverse wow. model of what <laughs> every agency and every production company has is just like if you work for them you only work for them right and that's what i wanted to stay away from like no nah, like you, you can't control people yeah that's i true. can't control people like i'm not going to control nobody who's mm -hmm. just trying to find their way in this space you and know especially what I'm saying? like with the industry worrying it's bound to happen where people yeah. are going to want to have the urgency to kind of do their own projects right like, exactly at some level so you might as well let them fulfill that and so one thing that i learned um through my journey is that like it's never a bad thing for somebody else to go work on their own stuff. Cause mm -hmm. it's like, if you working with me and let's just say you're a sound mixer, right? Mm -hmm. You go work on a movie for three weeks and you dealing with putting out fires for those three weeks. By the yeah. time we work on our next project, you're going to be so sharp. I That's ain't got to tell you nothing. That's true. Wow. I didn't even think about it that way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. How, do you still have a love for photography though? Very much so. I, I, I love all things creative. I love photography, video, fashion. What kind of photography do you like doing the most? Portraits, editorials. Okay. Um, like, I love, like, really um, editorial and docu-style. Like, okay. I, okay. I love really, like, connecting with a person in a real way, mm -hmm. telling a story. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I just really found... It's, like, my, my core... Um, my core love is in photography. It just so happened that I learned how to shoot video so well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And not, not are we really talking. It's just like, you know, like my love for photography is still there because like I really try to make every single video look like a photo. Like you should be able to take stills. That is very true. Of every. I will, yeah. That's, that's the sign of a good, you know, DP. I will agree with that. Like the aesthetics of your page or yeah. your pages that you guys, that you have, like. There is a, yeah, it feels very much like portraits. Yeah. Even like my experience, just kind of scrolling through the pages, right. it feels very picturesque. It feels it very should, much like a like, captured experience. Like you should, like my, my whole thing and what I've been telling like a lot of people these days is that like the the video you should, you sh the videos you shoot should look so good 
that you shouldn't even have to pull a thumbnail. Right. Like it should, oh. you should be able to just scrub through and just find whatever image that is. That is so true. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. But how do you get to that? What is what are what would you say as a film director? What are the elements that really distinguish your production company as far as like operating from a level of excellence? Because I feel like you guys do do that. What would you pinpoint as the thing that's like this is what makes us dope is because we do this? What would that be? Um, we care about the little things. Uh, okay. We actually value uh, the process. We actually care about like our careers, you know what I'm saying? And I think a lot of people have grown away from that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are just like taking on jobs because like it's the next thing to do. Mm -hmm. Like we're very, we're very intentional about like the stuff that we, we take on yeah. and that we work on together. It's not like, you know, just because like I got an email for a wedding, I'm about to make open season. <laughs> go and shoot a wedding like yeah you yeah. know what i'm saying we got other entities for that you yeah, know what i'm saying sure so it's like it's like that and then also it's just what, like what will be it's a, a standard of like excellence what would be a um something that's considered a little thing in production um more specifically speaking um and i'll say this for everybody that's watching that's like you know a creative uh working in the creative space um find time to prep like Prep your gear, like prep calls. Yes. If your shoot is today on Friday, you need to be having prep calls on Monday. People need to be making changes on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Y'all need to have another call on Wednesday to see what ground's been covered. Yes. Then by Thursday, you need yes. to be sending out call sheets doing like any last minute tweaks. Yes. La like again, this is last minute tweaks on Thursday. <laughs> not like <laughs> not your first call on Thursday. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I feel like I'm, you know, I'm a little offended. I feel like you're talking to me. <laughs> I, I'm not, I'm, I mean. I, <laughs> no, because I do, I do struggle with that. Like, that is yeah. something, like, very, like, early on in my, you know, yeah. production career. Like, that was something that I would do. Like, I would wait yeah. until day, like, shoot day to be, like, getting some of the things together. And that's, yeah. it. it's a terrible <laughs> feeling. Like, especially if something doesn't go right. Like, something as simple as, like, not all the batteries are charged. Yes. Or not all the mics are charged. It's right. just, like, that's such a small, like. Because it's such like a of a beginner thing that's like a standard. So it's it like is. why would you not have your battery? Like it doesn't right. look good for the right. client. Like on the client, like or to the client. It's like, no, like, why don't you have the basic stuff like you know, why don't you have the basic stuff done? So yeah, I think that's actually extremely an extremely important tip to give to yeah. some of the people who are starting off and in production. Can you talk to me about like so <laughs> and I don't wanna like skim past this because you're still being humble, but you've been able to tell me some of the people that you've been able to work with. Uh, as of late, uh, I've directed several J. Cole videos. Uh, I spent a lot of time working J. with Cole's Kanye West. J. Cole's my favorite West. rapper. Really? Yeah. He's amazing. Yeah. Um, What's he like on production? J. Cole is exactly who you think he is. Really? Yeah. I love that then. He's wow. exactly who he is. He's everything that he presents in media. And you work in this space a mm -hmm, long time. Mm -hmm. So you know when people just kind of like putting on the face. Right, right. He's not one of those. Like he's he's very genuine. Um, the way he speaks and the way he moves people, mm -hmm. it, it feels good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think one of the other things, I don't know if you tapped into it really when you were talking about the um, aspects of being a film director, is when you're working with high profile people, they also have the inclination to want to take creative liberties. Yeah. And so how do you kind of deal with somebody Obviously, you know, being of a high level influence yeah. and wanting to give input during production that is kind of essentially what we will call kind of off script. Right, right. How right. has that been for you? Um, that's been so like and I'll say this okay. and, and, and this is in relation to your question. Um, but a lot of being a director, um, like it's not like a set skill or a set thing that you just learn in school. Mm. Like being a director is. 90% just soft skills yeah. is being able to navigate, being able to um, trouble, figure out exactly, shoot. yeah, troubleshoot and figure out exactly what a client is looking for yeah. while also meeting the needs of your crew that you hired. Mm -hmm. That's what, if, if you can marry the two, you're a great director. Yes. <laughs> you're a great director. If, yeah. you're, if you're one-sided and you just like more client focused, which we know a lot of directors like that, mm -hmm. and then the crew hates them, and no crew work work for that person, right? That's true. And then also it's like if you're on the other end of the spectrum and you're sp specifically crew focused, mm -hmm. and it's only crew, and no clients, no clients gonna hire you. That's true. So you have to find that balance in between. That's good. 
Um, where else are going to go after that? Um, what was your question again? I was asking, like, does Jay Culver say, like, you have an idea? And he's like, well, actually, let's do it this way. I was oh, asking yeah, yeah, about clients yeah. taking creative liberties during production. Yeah, so with that, and that kind of coincides with what I was just saying. It's just like, um, like especially those high-profile clients, like, mm-hmm. not Jay Cole. I, I hate to even use him as an example, but, like, you know, any other artist, right? It's just yeah. like with, 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 with them, um, they do get in certain modes to where, they feel like everything re- revolves around them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can't be mad at them because that's all they ever know. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like right. for, like, let's just say an NBA young boy, right? Mm-hmm. He's been a millionaire since he's been 14. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like NBA young boy right now is like 22 or something like that. That's perspective right there. So it's like everything has always been about them. <laughs> everything about, like, the way they do things, the way they record, everything yeah. about their process is always been them. So you think they're going to come on your set right? and, 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 you? and just listen to you all of a sudden? <laughs> don't even know your name. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, don't even know my name. Like, yeah, yeah. So it's like, with that understanding, yeah. that's why I navigate certain clients the way that I do. So I'll listen to what they say. I'll try to, like, meet them halfway. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm big on meeting people halfway. Like, yeah. you got to meet clients somewhat halfway and make them feel that, too. Right. Even if you don't use it. Yeah. You got to at least Shoot it. try. Yeah. Or shoot it. Or shoot it. Even if you don't use it, just shoot it and, it's and move on. Right, right, right. How do you like working with rappers? Um, rappers now or like rappers in general? Because <laughs> that's two different things. Okay, let's do rappers in general. Um, it really depends on the rapper. Like, it's it depends on the artist. And it's it's like, yeah. Like, rappers get a bad rap. I know, like, in this space of when we're talking about, like, when we're having conversations within, like, people in our space. Yeah. Who, like, work with rappers. It's usually, like, not a good experience. What it's, do you think that is? What is that? It's. I think it, it just boils down to what I just said. It's just, like, um, rappers have, again, most rappers are, let's just say, under 30. Right. Mm-hmm. That's generally speaking. Right. So like most of them are under 30. They're young. They have a certain demeanor, demeanor. They have a certain energy about them. And again, it's like always about what they want, the way they do things. Yeah. And they're not open to listen to what you're saying unless you like a um, like a Spike Lee mm-hmm. or um, somebody like a Dave obviously. Myers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Somebody who's been stamped by Missy Elliott sure. 20 years ago. Sure. Like that's the only way they're going to listen to this person. Yeah. Um. But the thing is that sometimes I kind of find surprising. I've actually they haven't worked with rappers, but I just hear stories. Um, Man. Is they have, you know, they have a lot of opinions, but sometimes they don't have the budget. So and you're surprised by that. So with with, with that, that's a whole other topic too. It's like um, a lot of artists that do reach out for uh, videos, and this is like ninety percent of them. Mm-hmm. Um, they have this expectation of what they want to get done, mm-hmm. the way they want to do it. Um, like they, they, they may email you and say, Hey, look, like I want to shoot a video. I want like four cars. Yes. I want like 10 girls green screen and I got a budget of like a hundred dollars. Like, you know what I'm saying? And it's just like, they want you to figure it out. And so what I've done a great job with over the years is like, I don't email back. Like okay. I'll respond and say, Hey, you know, let's hop on the call. Yeah, yeah. Let's hop on the call. And through that call, I'll negotiate and say, hey, look, this is how much we pay for cars in the past. Mm -hmm. This is how much this costs. This is how much girls cost. This is how much the location costs. Mm -hmm. And it's like, when you put it in perspective that way, Mm -hmm. it resonates differently from me just sending an email with like a price list. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just talking about like, Email communication. It's a lot more personable. Versus phone call yeah. or in person. I think that's huge because I, I think that's a, that's also like oftentimes there's a lot of disconnect between. You got to meet them where they are. Yeah. Yeah. Between like yeah. the client's ep- expectation of what they think is going to happen versus what's the, what could actually happen with yeah. this given budget. So I think that's important too for other people who are like in production is like understanding really how to um, make your client's understand because they have these grand ideas or really they just don't understand what it takes to actually put something together no idea and so i was like you have to educate your clients right on doing that right um but speaking on money if you can get like (laughs) an average on budgets um 
the most like an average ballpark yeah. or you can say specifically what it was but like the most that you ever made during the production and kind of that pinch me moment where it's like oh my god i can't believe i'm getting paid this much to do this um the most i've ever made on the production um i don't know if there's like a an exact number that i pulled because like i don't really do it for that mm -hmm. like i mean i've made a decent amount of money on productions but it's also been years right in the where making. I didn't make anything. Okay, that's a discussion too. Like it's it's been years where I didn't make anything. Like it's it's been at least five years where, you know, I probably just broke even, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so I've only really actually made money since the pandemic. Like really, like in the last two years. Like last two, maybe three years. Like maybe I'll give twenty nineteen. Like I actually started making it. Like yeah. I was start, starting to do okay, but like I wasn't able to, you know, fly cruise right from Atlanta to LA or from Atlanta yes. to Miami like yes. we just did and shoot a rap radar episode with DJ Khaled, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Which we just got back from, but I wasn't able to do that then. Yeah. Um so like all of this is like very fresh and very new. Mm -hmm. Um but I would say, like, a lot of the conversations and a lot of, like, the, the, the rhetoric that I have in the production space. Yeah. And this is still, like, a very, very um, debatable topic. Uh -huh. um, so now that you are in the place where you are making good money, doing what you love, but you're also working with high-profile <laughs> people at mm -hmm. the same time, what, do you, what are your thoughts on working for exposure and not for money? Um, I think... I hate the term like working for exposure mm -hmm. when it really should be uh, working for knowledge. Like I'm working to learn something from this day. Like every time that you go out and you work for free, right, mm -hmm. quote unquote, mm -hmm. like you're working to gain experience so you can charge for it later. So uh, it was a lot of times like, you know, I know so many people that would just go out and they would just intern for a studio yeah. or they would intern for a production company or a crew mm -hmm. and i did that like that was my path yeah you know what i'm saying i didn't i didn't have the privilege of affording to go to film school mm -hmm. so it's like a lot of people like billionaires like they lose millions to stay billionaires like millionaires for true. example like they lose thousands or even millions to become a billionaire and like a lot of us as creatives we don't want to give up anything <laughs> to get to that next level but mm -hmm. you got to sacrifice something you have to like you got to sacrifice your time <laughs> mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't have money so they're not going to sacrifice that like you got to sacrifice time and so yeah. like when we talk about like um working for just that knowledge is just like, just like you got to be real intentional about like your time on set or just the time around this person that you yeah. interning under and like utilize that time and at the end of the shoot or at the end of the day you really got to go back and really take notes do some self-discovery and say what could have gone better today yeah like we're not gonna think about yesterday we're not gonna think about what my mom told me mm -hmm. we're not gonna think about like the kids like, what can I do or what could I have done better today in this moment mm -hmm. while I was here working for free? I ain't making no money, right. right? So that's already out the window. I ain't made no money. So what is it that I could, could have learned or did learn through this experience? Mm -hmm. And I think if more people do that, like, you know, the better I feel to be. What, thing, what lesson has taken you the longest to learn in production? Um... I'm still learning. <laughs> mm. I'm still learning. It's it's not a, it's not like you have a cap yeah. on what you can learn in in, in film. But what element of um, production has taken taking you the longest to learn? I would I would say the the element that's taken me the longest to learn. Um, and I wouldn't even say it took long, but like just um, breaking down budgets. Mm. um doing numbers mm -hmm. which i mean i i do that for my personal life so well but when you think about the grand scheme of things and you know dealing with workers comp yep you know dealing with commercial insurance um 
you know, licensing, mm -hmm. um, understanding that. Yeah. Do you do work with a lot of like union workers, actors? Uh, I work with some SAG actresses. Yeah. Um, I haven't really, I work with a few union um, crew mm -hmm. members, but you know, dealing with that and yeah. um, that can be a thing. And, you know, they got their own, you know, pay schedule. They have their right. own um, hours that they may work. Like it may be a 12 hour day. Right. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of union people, they work tens. Oh, you know what I'm saying? So having that stagger. Yeah. Right. So like instead of like, you know, normal call time, you might stagger them an hour later or mm -hmm. two hours later later. So you had them for the full day. You know, so it's, it's just stuff like Navigating that. Navigating that stuff. Navigating it goes that. back to the problem solving. Right, exactly. Like being able to pivot and like readjust and be fluid with kind of like what's happening. Exactly. Um, I think that's a major key. What's your, what would you <laughs> say is your favorite type of video to shoot? Um, as of late, it's been narrative and commercial. Uh, yeah, I, I like that's a lot my of, favorite too. Yeah, I, li I like narrative work because like you actually can pace yourself. You can take, you can breathe. Yes. in between takes yes. and like look at playback and really understand what went well mm -hmm. and what can be improved. Yes. I think that, I think that's key. I really like narrative stuff too, because I don't know, I'm big on story. Yeah. And so it's like, like you said, pacing is really big. Tone is really big. Right. Um, and character, I would say character is really big too, but it's like, you're allowed a lot like i like the word that you said you use breathe like i, I yeah. agree like that's a great term to use when you're thinking of like narrative work is being able to like let the actual project breathe and figure out how can we also elevate the story right. in this right. moment i love doing documentary stuff because i like doing off script yes i like doing raw because it's i don't know i like telling true stories and it's so, more personal very much more personal and you have a lot of more opportunities for like I don't know, something special to happen. Right, yeah. Because it's not scripted. So there's right. a lot of margin for like, I don't know, there's a lot of margin for magic Yeah. Um, to go and take place. Um, more recently, though, I like what you were saying about a team because obviously we're in, we're in Atlanta. And out here, I feel like there's a lot of shooters. Yeah, it is. There's a lot of people doing production now. It is. I don't know like what happened, but like it is. all of a sudden, everybody named Mama's a videographer. Yeah. It just came out of nowhere. But I think there's a difference between having a camera. There's a lot of people with cameras. That's what I like to say. There's right, right, right. a lot right, of people right. in Atlanta with cameras. But then there's people who actually do production and there's actual storytellers. How would you classify the difference? Uh, just because you got an oven, I mean, you're a chef. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's just it's just different, you know. So a lot of people they got cameras, and you know, kudos to them. Like a lot of people have cameras for different reasons. Yeah. It may be taking family photos. It mm -hmm. may be you know doing real estate stuff. Like it all depends. So it's it's so many different like channels and avenues, right? Yeah. And just back to my metaphor, it's like it's different types of chefs too. So. Have you ever been kind of? Um, I know for me, I'm like. I had it for like a split second where I was like, oh, no, it's like so many shooters out here, yeah. like feeling a little bit discouraged or insecure about your own capabilities because the market is so saturated within this, you know, within this space of being in Atlanta. Have you ever felt or dealt with that? No, nah, I can only focus on me. OK, I can only worry about like what I do. Yeah. What I bring to the table and the clients that's going to attract to me, they're going to attract to me. I can't live with this fear of somebody not hiring me because like. It's so many other people doing the same thing. Like, no, like, what's 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 for me is gonna be for me. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the other things that kind of people underestimate, especially a lot of the shooters out here, yeah. is actually, it's one thing to say I'm a shooter, but then there's also the business element. Like, a lot of people yeah. don't have their back office in order right, yeah. um, to be able to handle the influx of yes. clients that might start right. coming to you, and then they're high profile clients. Can you talk about? Your back office, because I think that's one thing that you yes. guys really have down pack. <laughs> put, yeah. In, yeah, down pack and put in place and yeah. how that's been um, an asset to how you've been able to do business. Man, like so again, open season is a family. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's like. Every like the core of open season, it's like. Ten people, that's like the core of open season. OK, but those ten are like chameleons. So it's like they can do everything. Mm -hmm. So it's like. Even though this person may normally be a DP, they can also be a producer and a director yes. and an editor. Yes, yes. You know what I mean? And yeah. so on and so forth. So it's like having that core structure is so important, mm -hmm. so vital. So like we can have, 
man, it's been so many times where we had three or four different projects going on the same day. Yeah. But he's over here doing this. Mm-hmm. Jarell is over here doing that. I'm here in Atlanta. Like it, it, we can, you know, flip and flop. However, yeah. and they're still the keys of certain departments. Like yes. he's still the the the, the key, uh, you know, of a camera department. He's still the the key of this production over here. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's where I think like our back office is so strong. Like we yeah. have that that strong core foundation, and it's all based around the fact that like they all believe in the brand. They all believe in the mm-hmm. fact that like I'm not. I mean, I don't know if we can curse on the show, but I'm not gonna like play with them. I'm not yeah. gonna like you know like bullshit them. Yeah. And um like not give them what they're worth. Mm -hmm. Like, let's just say you bring a prize at the open season. I'm not just going to give you a rate. Like, it's your budget. You tell me what you want open season to do with it, whether that be, you know, 20% of the budget or Mm -hmm. 40%. Mm -hmm. And I'll come to you again (laughs) and tell you what's realistic with that number. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's just what it is. I'm not going to like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so a lot of these companies and, um, you know, agencies and stuff like that, they do that. Yeah. You you try to bring a budget to them and they like, yeah, like Yeah, but man, we only got always... we only got this number left. Like, what you mean? Like right. this is my budget that I brought to you. <laughs> Has it always <laughs> been that way though? Cause I think that's important to be able to pay people when they come on to the team. Cause a lot of people are like, I'll just put you on, come, you know, be under my umbrella and come learn. Right. Is that always easy for you to feel like Yes, you know, like it's automatic you're gonna yes. get paid. Um so it's not an automatic pay thing. Um, in general, like, I can't pay you for something that I wouldn't hire you for, right? Okay. So it's like, if I bring you onto a job and it's just like, you don't really know how to be a sound mixer, mm-hmm. you don't really know how to be a DP, um, you haven't really produced anything yet. So the best space for, and this is for anybody in the world, like, you want to, you tired of your job and you, you're interested in just like learning production, just come out and be a PA. Be a production assistant. Um, it's no entry level to that, but you can come out and just learn about production in a real way. Um, and that's on any set. So low risk. A lot of low risk is I mean, you pretty much just doing like a lot of hands on work. So it's like moving mm-hmm. stands, moving sandbags, um, just being a voice of reason when it's needed. You know what I mean? Um, and the most important thing I think a lot of PA should do is you know, bring a good pen and a notepad, like taking notes, like taking note on every single person of interest that you have. Like Mm -hmm. if you're interested in being a producer, watch the producer. Right. (laughs) Just watch what they do. Watch the decisions that they make. That's good. And watch them from afar. Don't sit right up under them like the whole day (laughs) and ask them questions. Sit off on the side, remain on your task and just stay focused on that. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of that role, because I know you like to produce as well and direct, are you different when you get into those elements? Are you the same Caleb that's sitting next to me right now, or is it just like, oh, don't talk to Caleb, don't talk to Caleb, <laughs> like he's on nah, set? No, nah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm still, I'm still very warm. Um, like, I only got here just based on like my personality, mm. right? Just being somebody that is, you know, not an asshole. Like, I'm yeah. not, I'm not like. I don't I don't ever get too full of myself, right? Mm-hmm. Like you gotta be able to talk to people how you wanna be talked to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think that's the most important thing. And a lot of people, like a lot of directors, a lot of producers, a lot of production companies, they just talk to people however they want to talk to them. True. And then they wonder why they can't hire them again in a year. Mm-hmm. Like they act like, okay, like the market's saturated. Yeah. But the pros, right, that we talk about, that we yes, know, yes, it's only a few of them, right? That's true. So when it comes to hiring somebody mm-hmm. that does a specific thing and you don't talk to them crazy a year ago, two years ago, they haven't forgot that. Right. <laughs> That's true. They yeah. haven't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you wonder why you can't crew out this job and you need me to come in and produce. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Because yeah. they willing to come work for me, but they won't work for you. Yeah. So that happens a lot, too. So... Um, to answer your question, yes, it does require like a different hard hat, mm-hmm. right? As a director and a producer, and also me just sitting beside you, but like I'm still the same person. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing that I think people can take away from this interview, especially if they're in the production, 
is how do you actually get high profile clients? What is it that you guys are doing? Are you all emailing <laughs> them instead of DMing them? Like, um, what is the actual process to yeah. booking somebody of that stature? The same way that I get hope, high profile clients is the same reason why I have high profile crew. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, let that resonate. Like, for yeah. real. Like, it's all about energy. My energy attracts whole pro- high profile clients. Mm. My energy attracts the, 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 the crew that I have. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you if you do good business, you take care of people, you professional, um, you somebody who just cares, mm-hmm. like at its core, just cares and you give people grace, that'll take you a long way. Wow. Um, how do you feel about proxies? Uh, proxies are very important. <laughs> like, I literally like despise proxies. Really? Like, yeah, um, I mean, because I edit too. <clears throat> It's like the little nuances. If y'all know, if you know, you know. If you know, you know what we're talking about. Like, so just just for people out there that, that <laughs> don't understand, um, well, if you shoot photography, you're familiar with like a raw file mm-hmm. and a JPEG. Um, a proxy is essentially like a JPEG. It's like a smaller, compact file that it's almost like a preview, but you can upload it. And you know, I like to use proxies in the sense of like, if clients be like, you know, hey. We're not getting what we want to get out of this edit. Can we see all of the footage? You export your proxies. Mm. And instead of sending a terabyte and a half on Google Drive, <laughs> you can send like, you know what I'm saying, like 10 gigs. Yeah. That's the value. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but okay, so but when you're shooting though, because I, what, what do you, well, first of all, what do you like to shoot with? Well, um, I know you so, started off in Nikon. So I, I, I'll say this, like, the tool that I use, mm-hmm. it depends on the project. Okay. A camera is just a tool. Okay. That's it. So you don't use. So I, I like that you're saying that because there's people who like are very married to a certain yeah. brand, yeah. and it's just like this is what I shoot with. I shoot everything with this. What value have you seen in shooting with different brands? Um, your work just doesn't look one way. Mm. Everybody has like a certain look that they're going for, mm-hmm. but that's good for your own personal projects, right? If you right. want that certain style, cool. Stay in that project. Stay in that lane. You know what I'm saying? For your mm-hmm. own projects. But when it comes to clients and clients are looking for a certain look, you have, you to, have be- to venture out and go to different cameras, go to different lenses, because they're looking for a certain look. Yeah. And so people ask, like, how do you get certain clients? I shoot lenses and cameras that they want to shoot on. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Every project is it going to be Sony. Yeah. Just like every project ain't going to be Ari. You know what I'm saying? Every project ain't going to be uh, Canon. Right. right. It all depends. Yeah. Wow. What has been your fun, your, like the project where you're like, oh my God, this was so much fun. I would do this over again, this entire shoot. <laughs> um, man, uh, I, I, I would like to think that every project make me, makes me feel that way. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, it has its headaches. Yes, it has its, uh, its drawbacks. But... Man, every project I would do all over again. Well, what's like, the first one that comes to mind? The first one that comes to mind, um, man, Baptized. Uh, you know, shooting that video with Jid, Earth Gang, mm-hmm. Hollywood JB. Um, and for the people out there, uh, they went under this brand called Spillage Village. Um, they dropped the album in 2020 uh, by way of Interscope. Okay. And nice. so for that video, we had uh, the song is called "Baptized," obviously, um, and it's basically about the guys, um, like, for a lack of better words, they just baptizing niggas, <laughs> like <laughs> that. Like that's that's what they said in the song. So it's like they they baptizing people in the sense of like they doing like a cleansing of like the rap game. Like they showing people that like yeah they they melodic and stuff like that, but they yeah. can really rap. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And, and so, like, I, I came with that same energy for the video. So I had them in a the church. Yes. Um, yes. I got, like, 30-some messages in the church. You know, wow. 15 people in the pews. Had, like, a few, full choir. Right. These people never met each other day in their lives. You know what I'm saying? Wow. But they came out, and there was a part of this church scene. Um, and so we had that scene. That was one where they was performing, you know, in front of the... Uh, the podium that was sitting, you know, the chairs where 
the deacon or mm -hmm. the head pastor would sit. They would sit in those chairs and perform it from there. Um, but it went from that. The next word that we had, uh, we had like this creek kind of set up and we had women and kind of like, um, like think like um, very ethnic Afri African attire, like tribal okay. attire. Inside the, in the water? Yeah. So they in like okay. this uh, low river and okay. Jid and Earth Gang, they out, all out front. And we got like men in suits kind of like along the side, kind of like, you know, like they kind of like the mob, but like, um, okay. you know, like the Black Panther or something got like you. that. Okay. Um, so they aligned on the side. And then in the center, we had like these women um, and they weren't like, and I hate these like videos where like everybody just be twerking. And they feel like that's the only way to get a video off. Right. It don't have to be that. And so like for this one, like I really just wanted to see them kind of like in their element, just mm -hmm. doing like different poses and kind of like being like sculptures almost. Mm -hmm. Like that's how I wanted to present like, you know, yeah. black women. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. And then like. I love that. Yeah. So. That was the aesthetic uh, for the video itself. And we was going to transition from the church to the river mm -hmm. through the water because it's always called baptized. Mm -hmm. So I was going to have G kind of like going to the water as if he's being baptized and he'll come up in the river, like through like a transition. Mm. But the trouble that I ran, ran into on that set is like the tub that we were going to use for the baptism in the church. It was leaking. Mm -hmm. um, so it didn't work out. Um, so that was like a very pivotal you know, part of the video, yeah. the carry between both. But again, you can't be married to what you think as a director yeah. all the time. You still got to find a way to execute. Still got to still got to find a way to see it through, and you yes. know what I'm saying, figure it out. So, so what'd you do? Um, we just made it work with the footage that we had. Uh, it trended on YouTube for a long time. It's like one of the top twenty videos at the time for like two or three weeks. Wow. Um, we had another video that we did out that project was actually in Rolling Stone. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. So like those two or three videos that we did at the time were, were really good. Mm -hmm. They were impactful. I was going to ask you that too, because I think it's really cool. Because the cool thing about what you guys do and what, you know, a lot of uh, other shooters are not really privy to is you guys get to see your stuff on TV. Yeah. yeah. Like after it's done. What does that feel like to be like? I remember that production day or I'm looking at this shot or this, you know, one moment in the video and he's like, oh, that's off. Like, I'm looking at that now or we yeah. have white balance there or, what, you know, all the little stuff. But the actual idea of it's like, wow, millions of people now have access yeah. to this video. What does that feeling feel like? Uh, it's amazing to take a project that you've done mm -hmm. and show it to somebody that you love and say, hey, look, like I've been working a lot and I haven't been attentive to our relationship or our friendship the way it we, we should have mm -hmm. but this is what i created <laughs> i think that's a good excuse like anywhere it's like you know what i'm saying so sorry it, 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 it's, it's, sorry it's you like, didn't come it's, to your second birthday or your seventh right. birthday right but here's this video i did with jake <laughs> yeah you know what i mean so you it's, know it's, that's cool it's, it's really gratifying to show people like yo like this is yeah. this is the stuff i've been working on um, but i think that's an important part to think about when you're a yeah. creative is the actual sacrifice because so there, you have something has to give. You have to give. Something. Like you can't like work when you want to. You can't just shoot photos when mm -hmm. you want to. You can't mm -hmm. like you can't edit when you feel like it. Like you just can't have everything your way right. as a creative. And I think a lot of people come into this game thinking that that's how it goes. Like it's pros and cons to every industry. Yeah. And the con is, you know, for a lot of us, we started out not making anything. Mm -hmm. And so I'll sure. say this too, for people that really understand like, you know, okay, so you wasn't making money initially, Caleb. Like, how did you make money? I had an actual 95, like like people out there, they feel like they above like working. Like I worked at Walmart for two and a half years in college. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And you know, retail here, retail there. I worked on campus, um, worked at State Farm, like selling insurance, like, you know what I'm saying? like. One thing that I was going to ask you, because this is actually my favorite part of production, is yeah. the idea. I'm good at ideation yeah. and conceptualizing. Right. Um, can you talk about that? Because that, to me, that's like where you really get to flex. As, yeah. You know, considering yourself a creative. Yeah. Can you talk about the idea of like making treatments or presenting ideas yeah. to clients and right. them either liking them or disliking them? Yeah. So uh, the treatment process is... Um, the treatment process is literally the most important process out of like everything. Like, yes, you're good on set. You're a great director. Mm -hmm. You're good with people. But 
if you can't make a treatment or if you you don't know how to hire somebody who can make a treatment, yeah. you're not going to get jobs. Like that's your ticket for these budgets. You know I what think I'm that's like that's the um what do they what do they call that is your first introduction for people taking you professionally. Yes. Yes. And when yes. they see you have a good treatment, that's a good like if you have a solid treatment, it helps to solidify yeah. yourself and it helps to give you some kind of form of credibility to like the craft. Right. Um so right. I think that's key. But what makes for a good treatment? Um So first it starts with who you're making a treatment for. Okay. Like if it's like a record label you want to put that artist in the highest place possible, right? You want to make okay. them look like as grandiose as possible. You want to make mm-hmm. them look big. You want to center like a lot of people around them. You want to make them like the center of attention, right? So it's like, that's one thing, like the storytelling aspect of it. You can't just have them get killed off in the end. You know what I'm saying? Specifically speaking. Yeah, yeah. Like it has to make sense with the story that you're telling for that artist. Mm-hmm. Like they got to win at the end of it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's one Two is formatting. Like, your Ooh. treatments have to be formatted and spell checked. Like, if you got errors in your treatment and it's hard to read, like, they got another 10 they got to look at. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's so you feel good. Me? Yeah, I do. Like, it's, it's so many treatments that these label reps and commissioners are seeing that if they don't know you mm-hmm. from um, any other director, like, they're mm-hmm. not going to pull your treatment and just be like, all right, we're going to. Go we gonna we gonna we gonna tell her to send her treatment back, and we are gonna tell her to revise it. Like, no, nah, they are gonna move on. Yeah, they ain't got time. Tell you to revise it. <laughs> they don't have time so for that. So you have one shot. You got one shot. Wow. You got one shot. And that's what it. order do you do? Like, because speaking of formatting, like, what order kind of do you do for the treatments? As far as like, is it story? Is it characters? Is it right? You know, um, what, what so, do you guys do? and this goes back to like you know having mentors, right? Mm-hmm. One of my mentors for treatments. Um, and really putting together like the business side mm-hmm. of production was Chad Tinney's um, over at Resolve Media Group. That's one. And then two is Edgar Stavis. He's uh, over at Blank Square Productions in LA. So I really connected with both of them in a real way. Okay. And Chad, a beast with treatments, um, one of the best treatments writers I've ever seen in my life. Um, and Edgar, he really like, took my treatments and was like, he used to read me for filth. You know what I'm saying? He used to read my treatments and be like, look, bro, like, you need to remove this, you need to remove that. Yeah. Like, I, I literally got screenshots where he would just, like, rip rip it apart. And, like, eventually it got to a place to where, like, we was working on this one job, and this is when I first met him. This was like, man, this got to be, like, 2018, 2017, somewhere in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we eventually was, like, working on this one treatment, and... Uh, I eventually got it. You know what I'm saying? I got the job. Yeah. And the video shot in L.A. Okay. First time ever in L.A. Ooh. And we shooting uh, two rappers. It was Young and Ace. Okay. And NBA Youngboy. But the point that I'm making is, like, I would have never got that opportunity to go to L.A. for the first time yep. if it wasn't for this treatment that I spent hours, bro. Like, hours. <laughs> Treatments <laughs> learning take a how to make. time. Yeah, they do. They're very like, tedious. Like, they're very tedious. And, like, you want a surefire way to remove um, the good from the great. Mm-hmm. Ask them to write a treatment and tell them to turn it in tomorrow. Really? The next day? Yeah. That's the way it goes. But are your treatments more, <laughs> are your treatments more copy heavy or picture heavy? Um, treatments always need to be uh, picture heavy. Okay. Like, so less copy. So like, <laughs> and I, I hope hope I hope a lot of people are watching this, but like, yo, like, pictures are everything. Really. And for like a lot of clients, right, and a lot of these labels, mm-hmm. like, think about who's at the label. Who's at the label right now? It's mm. probably somebody who's young. You know what I'm saying? Probably knows the owner of the label. Yes. Right. Or has direct ties to the owner of the label. Okay. And they don't really know music like that. Is what I'm trying to say. Got you. Right. So they're not somebody who just in culture, like commissioning these videos. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like knowing that. Yeah. You so got to write the be treatment. More selective in like what pictures that you choose. Because that in yes. itself is the part that takes long. Is finding yes. the right pictures. Yes, and then also like. You can't really have this long copy about how 
this video is going to be similar to like Love Jones. Okay. Because that's not going to resonate with everybody at the label. Right. They All of them haven't seen that movie. So the mm. pictures have to really tell the story, right? You got to show images of Love Jones versus talking about it. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, it does. Oh, that's a gym. Yeah. That's wow. Okay. So who would be your dream, dream client to work for and dream shoot to shoot? <clears throat> um, well, I'm going to speak this into existence. Um, I can't really wait to work with uh, my guy, Jordan Peele. Um, yes. I can't really wait to work with, um, you know, a lot of actresses that I'm seeing right now in film. I can't really wait to work with um, Ryan Coogler. There's another one. Mm -hmm. um, that's my boy. I, I just love his path. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like being a young director from Oakland, mm -hmm. um, starting out shooting Fruitvale Station, and then going and shooting, um, you know, Black Panther and all the other films and stuff that he's working on right now yeah. too. Black Panther too. But like. I idolize and respect, you know, these directors because yeah, sure. like they cut through in a space that really wasn't for them. Like yeah. and I love Tyler Perry too. Um, that's another one. Um, but Ryan Coogler and um Jordan Peele, they're making movies in spaces that don't really yeah. serve black directors, right? Yeah. And Tyler Perry, he makes movies for us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not gonna discount it and make it seem like that's easier, but it's just it's just different, right? In my opinion. Yeah. Um, whereas with them, it's like you know you got Jordan Peele, he making basically like a sci-fi movie. Yeah, so at this point, he, just he has made his a sci-fi movie. He just made a sci-fi movie. Have you seen movie, it? Basically. Yeah, I, I seen it. What did you think? Uh, I think it's a great movie, but it's not a great movie for me. But do you like sci-fi? Uh, I'm not a huge fan of me neither, like that. and you know I thought it, I, Again, I agree with like, you. Yeah, it's it's just not a great movie for me. I agree, but I um, do still think like I'm gonna tell people to go see. It. Yeah, I'm still like yeah, go see it. Yeah, because not like that, but yeah, because we've never seen black people abducted by aliens. You never, know what I'm saying? Never. So it's a new experience. I'm still unpacking that too. Right. Like you know, for I'm 28, so for 28 years, I didn't grow up seeing that. I didn't never see that in cartoons. I didn't uh -uh. never see that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And, and nothing. Um. So, it may take some time for that specific movie to grow on me. Mm -hmm. um, but I love that he's willing to try. Yeah, sure, sure. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I was like, I, I really feel like he's made his own lane. I feel like now it, it's like, what genre is that? Jordan Peele. Like, yeah. it's just his own kind of thing. What would you say is like something that came out where he's like, dang, I wish I was a part of that shoot? What film or video or music video that you seen was like, that was incredible. That was genius. What they did there, like, I wish I was there. <sighs> I know you're going to hate me, but like, again, man. You, every, to, you know, you have to give I'm me sorry. one, Caleb. Yeah, you're <laughs> fun. What's for me is for me, man. I, I'm really sticking to that. It's just like, I mean, it's a lot of projects that I've been seeing. I've been like, like, dang, like, that was dope what they yeah. did. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you one of mine that okay. I'm like, what's how did what's they what's think what's of what's that? Like, how did they do that? So dope. Did you see the video? And I'm not, a, I don't shoot music videos, but yeah. I do, I do enjoy watching them. One of my favorite pastimes is um, watching trailers. I love, I love editing trailers. Yeah. And doing teasers. I'm really, really good at that. Okay. Um, but um, did you see the video Cash In, Cash Out? By who? By, um, who's in that? It's for real. It's Tyler the Creator, Twenty One. Oh yeah, yeah, the, the animated video. Yes. Yeah, I saw that. That's to gonna me, be that's, that's gonna like, be video like the way they use stop motion and stuff like that. Yes. And we gotta plug this up so it could be right here. Okay. But like, yeah, like just the way that it was like moving through. Yes, like, I haven't seen video. that in a long time. Like that video. It had a like element of nostalgia because to me it reminded me of, and I don't know, you might be a little young. I'm seasoned. Oh my god. You're 28, on. so I don't know if you know about Celebrity Deathmatch. <laughs> yeah, like, when yeah, that yeah, came yeah, out. yeah, yeah. Yes. But it reminded me of it's that. Just, it's the same. What essence. is that? Is that Play Doh? Like what that's, are they that's doing? That's like stop motion. Okay. Yeah. So but it was like, incredible. Like so, just just so people understand what stop motion is, it's like, you know, like, let's just say you have like a set. The set may be the size of that table. Okay. And you might have like a face where a camera's kind of zoom in on it, and um, again to the naked eye, like it's twenty four frames in one second. So a video might be three minutes just for round numbers. Um, you got to move that twenty three times for one second 
of the film and you multiply that, well, let's just say 24. So you multiply that 24 by, um, what's that? Like the three minutes, that's how many times or how much time it takes to really do that. That's stop motion. I know. That's why that video to me was like, this is stupid. And then, it's tedious. yeah. And then like, it looked exactly like them. And then the actual like, action that's taking place like i was just like oh my god i haven't seen i, w- I haven't been that excited like Man. watching a music video in such a long time that to me was just like oh my god like listen so who edited that video <clears throat> like the so I, I i will say um one project that i feel like i, I would have loved to have been a part of um I don't know if you've seen Solange's like last visual album. The one um, that like what did really good. The... On my way home. Yeah. Okay. The, no, the, no, the... not that one. I'm thinking of um. What's the one right before that? The one before that. Okay, the gotcha. Cranes in the sky. Yeah, yeah. Cranes, Cranes in the sky. Yeah. Yeah. So that was like 2016, but in 2019, uh, she released a film, All Shot on Film. Okay. Oh wow. Um, in 2019, and she really highlighted uh, Texas in a real way. Highlighted uh, black cowboys. Wow! You know what I'm saying? She shot real, she she shot black cowboys in a way that was like so empowering. Mm-hmm. Um, she shot black women in a way that was so empowering. So she got like black cowboys. It's, it's kind of like riding in a circle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's all in slow motion. Wow. She she got black women. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. carrying what looks like the weight of the world behind them in a desert. Wow. It's it's like. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. I like her. I like a lot of her work. She's very, very a, a, an amazing visual artist. Yeah. The other person that I really respect for their visual artistry is Toby Nguyen. Yeah. He's another one where I was like, Dang, can I just know you? I was like 100 feet away from him once and shot some video of him at yeah. a conference. And I was just like, God. like the way he does stuff. And he does stuff where it's like one take. Yeah. It's just incredible. It takes a, you know, a very, very high level of blocking. And yeah choreography and prep and but i think what he does what he's doing too is just like nobody's doing that people don't understand that like okay like it might just be like a one take but it's been so many times that i'm sure that toby has got to the end of a song <laughs> and it's like damn i messed up yep, yep, <laughs> and you had to run it back you got to run it back all the way to the top like yeah. and it's like yeah like it looked easy and a lot of clients or a lot of rap artists they feel like yo like we can shoot this in an hour bro Take an hour to set up. You do. <laughs> it take an hour to set up. I don't care where you at in the world. Like, yeah. it, it take time. That part, man. Um, I want to wrap, but before we go, I want you to give some word of, words of encouragement to people who may be like, "Man, I really want to go to the next level <laughs> in production, or I want to go to the next level as a creative." What would you say um, has been instrumental in you taking your own career to the next level? Mentors. 100% mentors. Um, the skills that you think you need to survive in this game is not the skill, it's soft skills. It's uh, being able to listen, it's being able to be on time, uh, it's being able to self reflect. Um, it's so many things. Like, that's what it starts with having those soft skills, having that core, and then finding a the mentor. So if you could do those two things, even if you don't know what you want to do, find a mentor and figure out based on what they do, what you want to do. (laughs) Like, it's really as simple as that. And if that mentor isn't serving you in the way that you need to be served, find another mentor. And it's like, you have to be willing to get outside of yourself and, you know, break the ice and ask a question like, hey, like, how can I help you? Like, in what way can I bring value to you? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it really just starts with that. And I think if more people do that, like, they can get closer to what they want to do. Um, and they're not wasting nobody's time and vice versa. Like, we're not wasting their time either. Like, if they just are more intentional, like, what are the intentionality? Like, just being intentional, like, it's, it's just so key. Um, and it just starts with that. Mm-hmm. Well, this wasn't a waste of my time. I got <laughs> I got a lot of gems out of talking yeah. to you today. I know you have so much like, I feel like even though you're still very young, considerably, subjectively, you're yeah. very young, at least to me. Like, <laughs> I feel like you have a lot more success ahead of you. And I feel like you are going to be like, you're really 
on the path of becoming our next Ryan Coogler, uh, becoming our next Jordan Peele. Yeah. Um, I love your work. I love what you're doing. If people want to be a part of Open Season, let me plug myself because I'm about to be right, the 11th. Right. I'm about to be the 11th core member of <laughs> Let's Open get it. Season. Let's get um, it. Um, if they want to be a part of what you guys are doing and a part of the movement, um, how can they do that? How can they reach out to you? Yes, yeah, so, uh, send us an email. Um, preferably, I don't really like. I mean, DM is cool, but I would prefer not to. Just shoot us an email because it's like less clutter there. Uh, if you want to find the email, it's on our Instagram, but also it's openseasonmedia at gmail dot com. That's o p n s e n media at gmail dot com. Um, also, our Instagram and website is the same thing. OPNSDN.com. You know what I'm saying? Also the same Instagram handle and Twitter. So you can find us there. You can find me at Caleb Seals on Instagram. C A L E B S E A L E S. Mm-hmm. That's it. The other place that we didn't talk about that you that the other place that we didn't talk about that you guys can actually find him that we didn't speak on yeah. is in his twenty thousand square foot. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. content yeah, we, space. We, we got we got to talk about that. Um, real please, brief, real because brief, I think that's brief. huge. Yeah, so I, I'm gonna talk about that real briefly, and we'll wrap up. But uh, you know, as of late, over the past two years, uh, I've started uh, a production studio by way of my um, one of my business partners, uh, Travis Cochran. Um, we got a twenty the twenty five thousand actually um, studio space um, here in Atlanta um, that serves a lot of photographers and videographers that are starting out um you can come in and pay like you know 100 to 125 an hour and have the option to shoot on six different sets um and i felt like that's something that atlanta needed and that's why we brought it like you go to la or new york Mm -hmm. you got different places to shoot at you got different sets that you can book on peer space anybody that works in production they know what peer space is yep um and Atlanta just didn't have that. So we brought that with that intent. Um, and a year later, we've been booked more times than I can count. Like yeah. it's, it's, it's been busy nonstop. So if you haven't been by the space or haven't seen us anywhere, like check us out at DHBuck on Instagram, T H E H B U C on Instagram. Um, that's our website as well. Um, check us out, shoot us a message. Uh, we're very flexible. We have the sets. Uh, we have like a black and a white psych wall uh, or infinity wall. We got office spaces. Uh, we're bringing in an editing suite. Um, and then also, if you just need um, production crew, like, you know, open season and the H book are like partner brands. So if you come in and say, hey, look, like the production team. So they just going to hit us up anyway. So just let us know. Yeah. There it is. I'm it. claiming it too. The next time you see me and Caleb, we're going to be on set. So we in. <laughs> uh, it already was an amazing time that I had with you. Yeah. Um, I look forward to seeing what you do next because I'm sure it's going to be dope. I want to thank you again so much for coming and sitting and talking with me uh, on finding your niche with niche. I do have to end it with kind of asking you because I like this. This this whole episode, this whole worthy <laughs> podcast is predicated on my parent company of Freed Minds and our mm. motto is that life's breakthroughs are one thought away, that you can literally be one thought from having a breakthrough. Yeah. So I like to ask people in this season in your life, as we get ready to close, what's what's been a dominant thought that you've been having? Uh, a dominant thought that I've been having is to just push through. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's so much adversity that we're facing mm-hmm. in today's climate through crime, through you know, lack of resources through COVID, through monkeypox. <laughs> like, it's so much through yeah. dating in Atlanta. It's it's so much, it's so many obstacles and so much clutter. A dominant thought that I've been getting is to just continue to keep going. It's something on the other side. Mm. So, but that's it. There it is. Before Caleb breaks in my set. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all make oh, sure man. to tap into what he's Y'all got tap going in, on. Man. Let's Thank get you it. so much. Peace. We out.